In IBBio Evolution Natural Selection Additional Higher Level Part 1, this is topic 10.3, the focus will be speciation, how new species arise. The essential idea is gene pools change over time. Here is an outline of all the Evolution Natural Selection movies, the core and the additional higher level 10.3. Use this outline to find the movie you need. This movie is focused here. Here is our first IB syllabus statement, and it's an easy one. Define the term species. Species is a group of actually or potentially interbreeding individuals with a common gene pool that produce fertile offspring. The phrase common gene pool should make sense in light of the term interbreeding. Keep in mind that a gene pool consists of all the genes and their different alleles present in an interbreeding population. The first step in examining speciation, also known as microevolution, is to define some terms. A population would be individuals of one species, closely related through interbreeding, sharing common characteristics and living in a common area. A gene pool are all the genes, including all the alleles of the individuals in an interbreeding population. In evolution, a change in the allele frequency of the gene pool of a population over a number of generations. This definition of evolution emphasizes the small steps toward reproductive isolation that sets the foundation for the formation of new species. Again, let's look at the definition of gene pool. All the genes, including all the alleles of all the individuals in an interbreeding population. You can see in this image all the alleles of the B gene among all the individuals in the population, and this constitutes the gene pool. While the phrase allele frequency may be obvious, let me define it here as the frequency of an allele for a gene with two or more alleles in the population, and it's expressed as a proportion of all the alleles, so from zero to one. Here are the two IB syllabus statements of relevance. Define allele frequency and gene pool, and state that evolution involves a change in allele frequency in a population's gene pool over a number of generations. In this diagram, you can see all the alleles for a certain gene for all the individuals in a population. This represents the gene pool, and you can see that all the alleles are equally represented in the population. Over time, by the fifth generation, you can see that the allele frequencies have changed. You can see the shift in the percentages here. By the tenth generation, you can see that some alleles are no longer present in the population. What we're looking at here, over time, is evolution, a change in the allele frequency in a population over time. This graph displays the frequency of a single allele over time in a population under two conditions, no selection and selection. At time zero, the allele is represented at 50%. 50% of the alleles for the gene would be this allele, the one that's displayed in this graph. Without selection, the frequency of the allele remains mostly the same. Random events might alter the frequency slightly. However, when selection occurs, especially directional selection, where one phenotype, one form, is not well suited to the environment, we can see a change in the allele frequency in the population over time. Here is a graph that shows the frequency of a dominant allele over time at three levels of selection pressure. The yellow curve represents the most intense selection pressure, while the black curve represents the least intense pressure. Now, if selection occurs at any level of selection pressure, the outcome is the same. Allele frequency changes, as you can see here, and this is evolution, as there's allele frequency change over time. When the selection pressure is particularly strong, as it is with the yellow curve, evolution occurs rapidly, as the frequency changes over a shorter period of time. Now let's examine the process of speciation more closely. When the allele frequencies change to a large enough extent, new species arise, as can be seen in the change in color. 
So let's dig into this, this diagram. When a population splits into two, becoming reproductively isolated with some barrier that prevents gene flow, that barrier is represented by this red line, the two populations can no longer exchange genes. There is a barrier to the exchange of genes. Now initially, the two populations following the split are, are the same species. You can see that in the blue color. But as isolation progresses with no sharing of new mutations or no sharing of genetic change due to selection, the populations become different. Notice the pink and blue coloration. In examining speciation, we need to examine the types of barriers, the types of barriers that would isolate two populations, resulting in low to no gene flow, such that two species would form. Here are the IB syllabus statements of relevance. Compare allopatric and sympatric speciation. Describe three examples of barriers between gene pools. And here are four different barriers to gene flow. We have the geographical or the physical barrier. We have behavioral barriers. We have the temporal barriers. This has to do with timing of fertility. And we have something called polyploidy which involves multiple chromosome sets. Be patient with polyploidy, stay focused, stay tuned. Speciation is the formation of new species through genetic isolation. We can see a single species here, and that can be separated into two different species through allopatric speciation, or two different species by sympatric speciation. In allopatric speciation, the barrier between the two groups is geographic. Geographic isolation separates the two groups so that they become different species. In sympatric speciation, it's a bit more complex, there are three barriers. One is called the temporal barrier, and there's a separation due to different timings of fertility, or it's a behavioral barrier, behavioral separation, where the two groups do not recognize the other's looks or emotions. And then the third on the sympatric speciation side is something called polyploidy. Stay tuned. On the left in this image, we can see allopatric speciation, a single population that is geographically isolated into two, such that each becomes new species as a result of the genetic isolation in the gene flow. This is the most common mechanism of speciation. On the right, we can see sympatric speciation, speciation in the same geographic area. Maybe a mutation resulted in a group whose cones came to maturity earlier or later than the others in the group. This would be reproductive isolation and lead to new species. Sympatric speciation, which is speciation within the same geographic area. Allopatric speciation is when gene flow is interrupted by a geographical barrier. As you can see, this river canyon separates two populations of squirrels. When they become isolated, these two populations no longer exchange alleles. Thus, any change in either population due to mutation or selection results in the accumulation of unique genetic change. Over time, the two populations become different species, as they have here. Adaptive radiation is a form of allopatric speciation, where an ancestral population colonizes an unoccupied niche, as can be seen here, as population A reaches this island, resulting in reproductive isolation and ultimately speciation to species B. A population of species B colonizes an unoccupied niche in a different location, Time passes, reproductive isolation, allopatric speciation, we get species C. Repeat the process throughout time, and we end up with five different species in different locations. The fruit fly in Hawaii underwent adaptive radiation as it migrated from older ancestral islands to unoccupied niches on the newer islands. As the fly moved to the new islands and those unoccupied niches, reproductive isolation occurred, resulting in allopatric speciation, different species of flies on each island. 
Once lizards reached the Galapagos Islands, 600 kilometers from the coast of Ecuador, they radiated to different islands, filling available niches in each different location. Once reproductively isolated, allopatric speciation occurred, as can be seen here, where we have different species in different locations. 200 million years ago, the continents on Earth were lumped together known as Gondwana land. Then, as the continents separated, populations became isolated, resulting in allopatric speciation. Each continent then had unique cohorts of species. As well, certain groups radiated into unoccupied niches. The marsupial mammals in Australia represents an example of adaptive radiation. If it's not already obvious to you, the isolation of islands has resulted in species unique to the island. This is what makes the biology of islands so interesting to study. As one example, Madagascar is the only location where the primate lemur can be found. Deep lakes are also locations where populations can become isolated from other populations, resulting in allopatric speciation. Lake Tanganyika has many endemic species, species found nowhere else. Now we move on to look at sympatric speciation, which is speciation in the same geographic area. Sympatric speciation is more difficult to document than allopatric speciation because the barriers to gene flow are less obvious. But the barriers that result in sympatric speciation are the following. Separation of fertility in time, a behavioral separation where the two populations no longer recognize the other's looks or emotions, and polyploidy. The first that we will look at in this movie will be the time barrier, the temporal separation due to differences in the timing of fertility. So here's my first example of the temporal barrier, I'm calling it mechanism one, where we have the apple maggot fly, Ragoletus pomanella. These lay their eggs on fruits and the larvae eat the fruits and the fruits are apple and hawthorn. Pay close attention here. In this slide we can see the larva feeding on the fruit. On the left we have the hawthorn and on the right we have the apple. This graph shows the emergence of flies over time and also shows you the timing of the fruiting of the apple and timing of the fruiting of the hawthorn. As can be seen in this graph, apple fruits mostly from August to September, while the hawthorn fruits almost entirely in October. The difference in the timing of the two fruit species has resulted in two populations of maggot flies, one that will lay its eggs on the apple and one that will lay its eggs later in time on the hawthorn. Thus, there is reproductive isolation of two maggot fly populations. As you can see here, the two species of apple maggot fly are emerging. Sympatric speciation is occurring. Behavioral isolation is the second mechanism by which sympatric speciation could occur. In this slide, we have two graphs that show the recordings of two species of lacewing insects that live in the same geographic area. Speciation has occurred due to differences in their song, their behavior. If one population has a behavior not recognized or not preferred as compared to another population in the same region, sympatric speciation may occur. Here's another example of behavioral isolation on the basis of coloration. There are two species of short-toed tree creeper that live in the same geographic area, but because of differences in the patterning of color on their wings, the two groups have become reproductively isolated, becoming separate species in the same geographic area, sympatric speciation. The third barrier resulting in sympatric speciation is known as polyploidy. Polyploidy is a condition of having more than two sets of homologous chromosomes. In other words, you could have three sets, 3N, or four sets, 4N, or six sets, or more. Polyploidy results from meiotic error in gamete formation and causes rapid speciation. 
Let's take a look at how it happens. In this diagram, you can see a diploid individual that produces diploid gametes. This is through meiotic error. The gametes should be haploid, one set of chromosomes, but due to non-disjunction during meiosis, diploid gametes are formed. Upon self-fertilization, a common event in plants, a tetraploid individual is formed. This is a new species, rapid speciation. Polyploidy is a rapid form of sympatric speciation due to meiotic error, non-disjunction. It's relatively common in plants, less common in animals, but it is found in some species of animals. Here is the relevant IB syllabus statement described speciation by polyploidy using the genus Allium as an example. I've covered this statement already, except to say that Allium provides an example of a polyploidy species. Allium sepa has 16 chromosomes. English leek Allium ampliprosum has 32 chromosomes. English leek is a different species, most likely because of meiotic error resulting in polyploidy, two sets relative to Allium sepa. Polyploidy occurs when you have failed meiosis resulting in diploid gametes, self-pollination, and this forms new species. The paper birch is a pentaploid with a chromosome number of 70. The haploid number N would be 70 divided by 5. That's 14. Thus, the diploid number would be 28. Celosia argentea is a dodecaploid, 12N, with 72 chromosomes. The haploid number would be 72 divided by 12. Thus, N would be 6. Rumex crispus is a hexaploid with 60 chromosomes. I'll let you figure out the haploid and diploid numbers. Among polyploidy animals, members of the salmon family are tetraploids. And the Vizcacha rat of South America is also a polyploid. I have covered all of these IB syllabus statements in this movie, describe three examples of barriers between gene pools, compare allopatric and sympatric speciation, outline the process of adaptive radiation, and explain how polyploidy can contribute to speciation. Please review these statements to reflect on how well you have internalized the material. Review the movie as need be. With the few remaining slides, I would like to approach the concept of barriers to gene flow from another angle. Barriers that prevent the formation of a zygote, this would be pre-sex, are called pre-zygotic barriers. Geographic isolation, temporal isolation, behavioral isolation, and polyploidy would all be pre-zygotic barriers. A post-zygotic barrier, important in the formation of different species, would be the infertility of the hybrid offspring. Here's a diagram that emphasizes pre-zygotic barriers. These are barriers that prevent the formation of a zygote, prevent the sperm and egg from ever reaching one another. Geographic isolation, temporal isolation, behavioral isolation, and another concept, mechanical isolation. In other words, the sexual organs just do not quite fit together. Post-zygotic barriers are barriers to gene flow after the formation of the zygote or after the fusion of sperm and egg. Problems with the hybrid, as can be seen here, are post-zygotic barriers. By way of example, the mule is a hybrid of a horse species and a donkey species, and the mule is infertile. This is an example of a post-zygotic barrier in the formation of new species. In this slide, you can see how hybrid infertility would work. And this illustrates the mule example. We have different species with different numbers of chromosomes, but otherwise closely related mate. To produce viable offspring, the mule. But with an odd number of chromosomes, homologous pairing during gamete formation in the hybrid is not possible. Thus, the hybrid is infertile hybrid infertility. This is a post-zygotic barrier. And that brings to a close IB Bioevolution Natural Selection Additional Higher Level Part 1, Topic 10.3. In Part 2, 
We will continue with the concept of speciation, but we will approach it from a new angle.